is TOS TV, your digital first on African network. I'm Adesu of CE, and this is Africa Now. Chad's main opposition candidate, Sela Kavzabo, has announced his exit from the presidential election set for 11 April. Kavzabo has accused the incumbent Idris Debi of using force to intimidate rivals. President Debi came into power through a military coup in 1990. Is serving his fifth term, he's a strong ally of the West in regional counter-terrorism oppression. Kavzabo's announcement follows the killings of at least two people as security forces tried to arrest another opposition leader, Yahaya Dilu, at his home in the capital, Ndamena. The climate of insecurity will definitely overshadow the electoral campaign of candidates confronting Debbie's patriotic salvation movement, he said. By withdrawing from the race, Kavzabo said he was refusing to provide cover for a large-scale masquerade. Morocco has announced that it has suspended contacts with the German embassy in the country over its stance on Western Sahara. The country's foreign affairs ministry cited that the decision is due to deep misunderstanding with the Federal Republic of Germany on fundamental questions of the Kingdom of Morocco, Western Sahara, a former Spanish colony was annexed by Morocco in 1975. Since then, it's been the subject of a dispute between the Moroccans and the indigenous people. The ministry called on all ministerial departments and all the bodies which came under their supervisions to suspend all contact, interaction, or cooperative action in any way, shape, or form. The state agency and Moroccan's government have yet to confirm the news. Morocco and Germany have long maintained good relations. Still in politics, Nijay's opposition figure, Hama Amadou, was imprisoned on Monday for his alleged role in the unrest that followed the result of the presidential election following three days in detention. The public prosecution service said hundreds were arrested and two were killed after violence erupted following the Electoral Commission's declaration that the former Interior Minister Mohamed Bazoum won the February 23 vote with 55.75%. Meanwhile, the present interior minister, Akachi al Hada had accused Amadou of being the main author of the unrest that broke out in the capital near May. Amadou was banned from contesting the election results because of a conviction for baby trafficking, a charge he says was politically motivated. Consequently, he threw his support behind Mohammed Hismani, who gained 44.25%. On Monday, the opposition capped 24 slash 21 coalition and its allies announced their determination to defend the victory of the opponent, Mohamed Usmani, by all legal means. The coalition said it demands the unconditional release of those arrested, including Amadou. This is your Digital Affairs Pan African Network, TOS TV Network. You're watching Africa Now, stories on Ebola and COVID-19 after the break. Welcome back. Three new cases of Ebola have been confirmed in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, bringing to 11 the number of cases since the resurgence of the virus was declared by the authorities last month. Four people are said to have died and two recovered amongst the 11 cases. In a separate outbreak of the disease in Guinea, the World Health Organization said two new confirmed cases have emerged, bringing the total to 17 and the first resurgence of the virus there since the world's worst outbreak in 2013 to 2016. As of Sunday, health authorities in Guinea had vaccinated more than 1,100 people against Ebola. Mike Ryan, the WHO's top emergencies official, told a media briefing. Approximately 500 contacts have been identified and 99% of them are currently tracked and followed, Ryan said. On COVID-19 developments, police in Malawi's capital, Lilongwe, have used tear gas to disperse irate school pupils who caused major traffic disruptions as they stage protests to force schools to reopen. Pupils wore their school uniforms and took to the streets in other parts of the country as well. They used rocks and tree branches to block roads, prompting police to use force to disperse them. The government had ordered the reopening of schools, which were closed six weeks ago, following a sharp rise in COVID-19 deaths and infections. But teachers have defied the order, demanding to be paid a risk allowance, which the government said it was unable to meet. Last week, negotiations between the government and teachers' representatives ended without an agreement. But the president of the teachers' 
Union of Malawi says that the government had called for negotiations to resume on Tuesday. Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Mangawa, had relaxed lockdown restrictions in place since 5th of January. He cited a decline in the number of cases, fatalities and hospitalization as the reason for the lockdown restrictions relaxations. The curfew is now to run from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Written permissions are no longer required for movement and intercity travel is now permitted. Businesses and markets can reopen while schools and universities must prepare to reopen although no date was given. He added that funeral gatherings remain restricted to 30 while other gatherings including church meetings are limited to 50 people. No sittings are permitted yet at restaurants, bar, nightclub and gyms still remains closed. According to the latest figures from the health ministry, Zimbabwe has recorded 26 new cases and no deaths on Monday. Away from COVID-19, Zimbabwe's Vice President Kembo Mohadi resigned on Monday following local media reports around sex scandals. Mohadi said he had taken the decision to step down not as a matter of cowardice, but also as a sign of demonstrating great respect to the office of the president. He also said, and I quote, I have been going through a soul search in pilgrimage and realized that I need the space to deal with my problem outside the governance chair. He said in a statement released by the Ministry of Information. Local online media self service Zim Live has in the past two weeks carried reports that Mohadi had improper sexual liaisons with married women, including one of his subordinates. Mohadi, who is 70, denied the accusation last week, saying this was part of a political plot against him. He continues to deny the accusation, saying he would seek legal recourse. This is your digital first from African Network, and you are still watching Africa Now, our head of business and sports. Thanks for staying tuned. You're still watching Africa Now. And on to business, the price of petrol in South Africa is expected to increase by 66% per litre, while a litre of diesel will go up to 57% and paraffin by 49 cents. The price hikes come as food prices also go up and an increase in electricity tariffs looms. The Automobile Association, while commenting on unaudited month and fuel price data released by the Central Energy Fund, recently attributed the latest fuel price price hike to increase economic activity that led to the appreciation of the rand against the dollar and an increase in demand for oil. The association says that increased economic activity made possible by the global rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine was leading to firming demand and higher prices. It also cites the impact of Saudi Arabia's surprise cut, effective from February of 1 million barrels of oil per day from its production targets above and beyond its OPEC com commitments. It adds that if U.S. production doesn't catch up with the failing inventory, the oil price would come under further pressure, noting that the power barrel prices of crude had almost recovered to their pre-COVID-19 levels. In Kenya, the jump in the price of fuel and some food items last month pushed up the February inflation rate to 5.78%, the highest level in nine months. The inflation rate rose from 5.69% in January 2021. The Consumer Price Index, which measures the price of everyday household goods such as food, clothing and transport, rose by 0.7% to 113.4% in February from 112.6% in January, according to data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. As expected, the transport index is increased by 2.33%, pushed up by the rise in the price of petrol and diesel, which jumped by 7.57% and 5.66% respectively between January and February. On a positive note, the Kenya shilling remained stable against major world currencies in February, exchanging at 109.77 Kenya shilling per US dollar on February 25. And in sports, Derek Kakuza started with a 
hat trick as debutants Uganda continued with their dream run at the total under 20 Africa Cup of Nations Africa beating Tunisia 41 at the Olympic Stadium in Nokchut on Monday to book a date against Ghana in Saturday's final. Kakuza, duly named man of the match, moved clear of Ghana's precious boar in the race for the golden boot. His hat trick against the Tunisians taking his tally in the tournament to five. He scored one in the first half and two in the second, adding on to Richard Basangwa was early opener. The Ugandan Hippos showed no sign of state fight despite it being their first ever time at the tournament and were taking the Tunisians by the horns from the opening minute. They however had to make unexpected changes when Nijab Yiga, who had started as the left-footed swinger of a three-man mid midfield, went down injured. This necessitated a change in shape for the Ugandans. Despite the change in strategy, they were still on top of their game. And that is African Now on your digital first Pan African News Network, TOS TV. For more updates, do visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Do also follow and like TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS TV Network. I am Adesua Osui. Thanks for watching.